Greetings, it is I, the disembodied voice of SPSS, and I will be your host for this video today. So in today's video, we'll be looking into how to run a hierarchical multiple linear regression using SPSS. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you how to run some of the plots for you to check the assumptions of multiple regression. So without further ado, let's take a look at the data we have today. So we have a few variables here, advertising budget, album sales, number of plays on radio, and attractiveness of band. So the main goal here is to see uh, how album sales can be predicted from the other, uh, from the predictor variables. So you can take a look at the data view to see some numbers if you want. Now to run a regression, you would go to Analyze, and then click on Surprise Surprise Regression, then click on Linear, because we want Linear Regression. So the first thing we want to do is to slot in our variables in their rightful place. The first of which is album sales, which is your outcome variable. So slot that into your dependent box. Next, we want to slot in our predictor variables. But remember, in hierarchical regression, we want to enter our variables sequentially, starting with the most important variable. So the first predictor that we want to put in is advertising budget, because money makes the world go round. Um, so yeah, so put that into your independent box. Then you want to slot in your second variable, but before that, click on next so that SPSS will know that you are entering it, uh, you're entering your new variable in the second model. So the next most important variable here is number of plays on uh, radio. So slot that in. Finally, we want to slot in our third variable. So click on next and then put attractiveness of band into the third model. Okay, so that's done. Now we want to select uh, a few statistics that will be useful for us. So click on statistics. Now click on confidence intervals because all of us could use some confidence every now and then. Next, we want to click on R squared change, descriptives, part and partial correlations, which will give you your, uh, from which you can get your semi partial R squared, which is a measure of the effect size. Then you can click on collinearity diagnostics to check for multicollinearity as well as Durbin Watson's, because anything with a fancy name must be useful. Uh, but yeah, Durbin Watson's will let you test for the independence of error assumption. With that done, you click on continue, and then you just click on OK. And then SPSS will immediately vomit out all of these tables for you to examine. So we won't be interpreting any of these tables today, because the main goal of this video is to show you how to run a regression. But just a quick note, now because hierarchical regression can be a bit confusing, we want to make sure that we've entered our predictors correctly. So one way to do so is to look at your model summary. Now your model summary here shows you that you have three models, which is which is correct. But we want to know what are in these models in the first place. And you can do so by checking these, I don't know what you call these captions. But anyways, so you can see that the first model contains advertising budget, which is the first predictor. The second model will contain advertising budget and number of plays on radio. And then finally, the third model will contain all three of our predictor variables. So we've entered our predictors correctly. Okie dokie, we've run regression successfully, but now we want to produce the plots, which will allow us to check for the assumption of homoscedasticity, linearity, and normally distributed residuals. To do so, we'll need to go back to our data view and rerun regression with a few more options. So you can go to Analyze, Regression, and then Linear, and then you get this window again. But it is 2020, ladies and gentlemen. We have no time to click on multiple buttons. So let me teach you a shortcut. Uh, go to this button over here, click it, and you'll see that it will show you a list of the latest uh, statistical tests that you have run. So click on linear regression, and you get this button, uh, get this window immediately. So all of the variables are already in their place. What you want to do is to click on plots. Now, do not be too confused by these uh, confusing names. What, you, what I want you guys to do is to put this Z pred into the X box over here, and then to put this Z receipt into the Y box over here. So these variables are actually just your standardized predicted variable and your standardized residuals. So for the purpose of this video, you just want to make sure that you slot them into their place so that you can produce the plots. After that, you want to click on histogram, and you can click on normal probability plot if you want. But I want you guys to also click on this produce all partial plots because they will show you scatter plots uh, showing you the relationship between your outcome variable and each of the predictor variables separately. 
Once you're done, click continue and then click OK. Then you'll get the tables as per before, but below here you'll see several of these charts. So this histogram will give you a visual inspection of whether or not you have met the assumption of normality. And then we have this scatter plot over here, which is your standardized predicted value against your standardized residuals. This will show you whether or not the assumption of homoscedasticity has been met. And you just need to look at the plot and see if there's some kind of funneling in uh, the shape, in the trend of the plots. You can see here that the data points are mostly spread about uh, randomly. There's no clear funnel shape here. So we can say that the assumption of homoscedasticity has been met. As you scroll down below, you'll see partial plots, uh, which are basically plots of the dependent variable against your predictive variables, separately, of course. And you can check the assumption of linearity here. You can see how the uh, relationships are mostly linear in the first two plots. Uh, this plot is a bit weird, kind of like me, but yeah. So that's how you check for linearity. So yes, so that's how you you will check the assumptions uh, from the plots overall. Uh, and this marks the end of our video. So yes, I hope you've benefited from uh, my education pretty well.